What does a change agent look like today when it comes to students K through 12? I see a student who is a critical thinker, somebody who has global empathy, somebody who's really plugged into their community and they have an awareness of where they're from. They acknowledge territory. They acknowledge they are a guest in territory. They're learning as much indigenous words as possible, as many indigenous traditions as possible. We're seeing them at ceremonies, at round dance, as escapios, as helpers. We see them being actively involved so that when they become parents, they're able to pass on these traditions with utmost respect to their children. That's reconciliation. I think teachers ultimately are change agents from the moment you enter your undergraduate program. That's my understanding. And uh, because when you are become a, becoming a facilitator for students, you're becoming um, a facilitator of curriculum. And it's almost like a tertiary um, relationship. So you have um, curriculum, you have the teacher, and you have the student. And those three pieces work um, together. They're embedded, they're in relationship with one another. And how does that teacher open doors, open minds, open windows? Um, you know, always using curriculum sometimes is kind of like a gauge, but allowing students to be those co-creators encouraging those students to be co-creators of curriculum and how will they do that. So I believe that it's, um, it's very necessary uh, to be part of that relationship and understanding that it's not a top-down approach when we're teaching children, young children, whether they be in kindergarten, middle years or grade 12. It's really about allowing those children to navigate their own space, to navigate the information that they seek to understand and how will they infuse that in their everyday life? And how will they take that forward? So in 20 years, what are, how, how are our children going to look? What are they going to tell us? What are they going to tell us in Alberta? And um, when those minds can come together, when our students can come together and tell a new story in our classrooms, imagine the new story that they'll tell in their workplaces in 20 years or the new story that they'll tell in their narrative inquiry class in university, or the new story that they'll tell when they become an MLA, or the new story that they'll tell when they become, you know, a lofty goal, maybe the prime minister. And, and so I believe that those stories may be small, um, but a story is forever powerful, and it's cyclical, it continues, it grows, it spirals, it nurtures and it continues to infuse who we are daily. For me, internally, uh, reconciliation is a daily process. So it's really reconciling um, my history, it's recon reconciling my ancestors, it's reconcil reconciling where I am today, and it's reconciling where I am going tomorrow. So I believe much of that relationship across Alberta and Canada is Ha, it's in everything that we do and reconciliation may take 150 plus years and that's okay but as long as we're we're part of that process as long as we're open to that process and as long as we offer those opportunities for our students to create their own spaces of reconciliation and it may may not be titled reconciliation it simply may be living in a good way in relationship in our classrooms. It simply may be living in a good way in our spaces, in our after school activities with one another. And it simply may be living in a good way when we enter a store or we enter an office or we enter a hospital. So how do we live in a good way with human beings? And I believe that's part of reconciliation.